one of the oldest HBCUs and widely considered the mecca and capstone of higher learning for African Americans for over 100 years, its legacies and their contributions to the world in various industries and business is unparalleled. Each year, thousands of students have aspirations of attending Howard in hopes of following in the footsteps of their parents, as well as some of the most notable and influential alums in every industry from entertainment, law, business, politics, and countless others. For me, a proud alum of HU, I wanted, and even more so, needed to produce this documentary to show a representation of black excellence rarely seen in such a way. We are the product of greatness, and if no one else chooses to represent the totality of us, I will take that baton. I am Earl Christian III, AK Mr. Urban Wall Street, class of 92. Oh, crazy. Well, um, I guess Howard University, as far as um, its influence and evolution of my life, could probably be summed up in one word, everything. Um, you know, it's crazy. A lot of people have their path to Howard. Mine was kind of a little different. Um, I didn't have intentions to go to a historical black college university when I was a junior in high school. Um, I didn't have um, parents that graduated from uh, college that pointed me in that direction. Uh, I was kind of in the streets running aloof a little bit, to be honest with you. And what happened to me was my uh, senior year in October, we went to Howard University for homecoming. And it was just, you know, me and my fellas on like one of those fun trips, like, oh, we know the girls are down here at the school and we're gonna go down there and do it. And it, um, it was a life changing event for me because um, what happened was where I was growing up in the environment I was growing up in, you know, um, the dudes that was driving the 190Es weren't college graduates and the sisters that was wearing minks normally had them on with bamboo earrings. And um, it was kind of like an um, uh, eye-opening experience for me when I walked across the yard for the first time and the brothers that was driving the 190Es uh, were speaking perfect English and uh, giving each other love and hugging each other and nobody was looking over their shoulder. And when the sisters on that same campus had on minks and, you know, talked with class and held their self in high regard, um, it kind of shocked the hell out of me, you know. I was down there for the party and, but you know, there was some realness going on in the background that kind of opened my eyes up to this experience. Now don't get me wrong, we were still running through homecoming and looking for the women and doing what we do, young guys with fly cars and loud systems. But as I experienced, you know, from the Thursday to the Friday to the Saturday, um, the wallpaper became more important than everything in the front view. The, the organization of the homecoming, the respect all the brothers and sisters have for each other. You know, we all love the same music, you know, we just kind of represented it in a different way. And, you know, walking on that yard changed my life. When I went back home, uh, one of my homeboys, Jason Perry, was at school down there. And when I went back home after that trip, I said, I want to go to Howard University. Now, the ironic thing is, I'm from White Plains, New York. Um, and, you know, I did all the gifted and talented stuff when I was young, but, you know, when I was coming up in the mid 80s, in the, late eight, in the early 80s, you know, it wasn't cool to be smart or, or, or visually show that you were smart. So I, you know, kind of failed myself uh, to the alternative school out of White Plains High School. And when I came back home from Howard University and told, you know, the faculty at, um, at the school I was going to at the time, you know, that I wanted to go to Howard University, you know, I was getting laughed at, really, because it was, it was more of like, you know, are you serious? Like, really? You think you're just gonna walk into Howard University? We've been telling you to apply yourself this whole time period, and you have not. And now, because you want to go to Howard University, you think you're just going to walk in there? And uh, the laughs empowered me, you know, and I went and I, I got all my books and I uh, changed my GPA 
and um, I rocked my SAT scores. I never took any of the testing serious, and I rocked my SAT scores, and I still felt like I hadn't done enough to get accepted. So what I did was I sat down and probably wrote the most revealing letter of myself to the registrar's office. Um, it was a 10-page letter describing how I, what I've been through, you know, who I was, um, and how I want to change my life. And as I was writing the letter, I was crying. And some of the teardrops were on the letter. And um, it's crazy, back then I took the letter and I FedExed it to the registrar's office. Now FedEx back then was like $180 to send an overnight envelope, you know? And I just wanted to make sure that they got it and that it was as important to them as it was to me. And um, about 30 days later, later I got accepted, um, not for, um, not accepted for uh, um, the, the fall semester, but accepted for spring semester. So I ended up going to Howard that January and um, it, it changed it, it changed everything, you know, it changed everything. And um, it began the metamorphosis of Chris Latimer. So me going down there as a cool guy and, you know, and being around all these people that were, was pur were purposed and focused kind of uh, put me just in another place. Um, and it changed my life. So Matt, we're here in your offices. We yes, we see, are. Yes, we, we are. See. Yes, we are. And I want to ask you, like I've asked everyone else and all of our colleagues over the years, uh -huh. how has Howard University influenced the evolution of your life? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, just to be honest with you, I mean, I could go on and on and on all day. Um, when I got to Howard as a freshman, I was from Harlem. New York, I got to DC, a young 17 year old young man, um, first in my immediate family to, to go to college. And Howard is basically where I grew up, is where I became a man. Um, when I got there, you know, we heard the sayings, we all heard the sayings, uh, Howard University was called the, the Mecca of Black Intelligentsia. Well, I am living proof that that experience is, is actually accurate and significantly accurate because Howard is where, you know, not only did I learn so much about our people, about our history, but I learned so much about myself. Nowhere in the world will you have a group of, of individuals, of young, not only African-American, young African-Caribbean, um, young Africans, young Afro-Europeans, just people from all over the whole African diaspora matriculating in one place, in one time, in the nation's capital, sharing their experiences, sharing, you know, respecting everybody's different backgrounds, um, learning so much from each other. Uh, that experience, those years, profoundly impacted me in my development as a human being being as a man, um, and I still think back to experiences that I had as a student at Howard and how it's impacted me today as a professional, as a father, as a husband, um, just as, a, as, a, as another black man, you know, striving each day in this country and dealing with the things that we're still dealing with in 2015. And I think about the issues that we were dealing with in 87, 88, and 89. And, and, and looking back on how we dealt with those things and how we confronted those issues and seeing how people are dealing with certain issues now in today's times, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. I mean, I'm sure people who went to other universities and other schools feel fondly about their schools and, and as they should be because those years are very important to everyone. But to me, it's just uh, no comparison, the impact that Howard University has, not only on me, obviously, but I have so many lifelong friends, and when I speak to them regularly, and we all share similar experiences and similar feelings, it's just, you know, it just solidifies it for me and reassures it for me that Howard University is a very unique place, um, and the experience of attending there and matriculating there as a student um, I'm very fortunate, very blessed to have done that. And, and definitely at the time period that I did do it, um, to be, have been there with some of the people that, you know, I still consider lifelong friends today. So we in here, fingers. Mr. Urban Wall Street. Washington, D.C., baby. Howard Homecoming. Immersion Creations. Nation's capital. Urban Wall Street. 
got my brother in here, you know, he's a good brother right here. He's about to take us to the campus. So we're about to start this project. You know, how are we coming to experience? My young people out there, a lot of you may not want to go to college, you think you don't have the time, but understand something, your greatest network, your greatest assets are going to be your friends, your comrades, your associates from college. Not necessarily the people you grew up with, not necessarily your people from high school, but your comrades from college. So I want you to enjoy this project, live your life, take control of your life, get your education, and come to Howard. That's a beautiful thing. We'll see you in a minute. Keep watching Howard Homecoming, the experience. Enjoy. There he is. There he is. Big E. Mr. H. -O. This is, you know, the honorable Chris oh. Washington. Oh, cut it out. Keep on. No, no, no. Yeah, go, yeah. Go, go. What's good, baby? What's up, man? How are you? I'm blessed, man. What, 2014, Chris, tell him what's good. What's it? Well, on the yard, it's homecoming. The sun is shining. It never rains on our homecoming, so it's always good to be here. Now, for the people that's under a rock, let them know who you are, brother. I am the legendary Chris Washington, class of 1992, president of the Howard University Alumni Association. Yes, yes. So what are we looking forward to this weekend, Chris? Uh, well, let's see, we, we celebrated, HOA had our 50th anniversary celebration yesterday. Uh, we had a red, blue carpet reception at the Mayflower Hotel. We honored 33 uh, distinguished alumni. Then this morning, we actually got up and we did community service at the Capital Area Food Bank. We had about 20 people come over this morning from 9 to 12, and we uh, I think we moved about 10,000 pounds of cans. Um, hashtag broth is not soup, okay? And then uh, we've got our alumni tent today. We're going to be out tomorrow with activations. We've got alumni Sunday with Rankin Chapel Sunday and the alumni brunch and fashion show. It's homecoming. Chris, real quick, why was Howard influential in your life? Oh, man. Why wasn't it? I mean, really, I got here and uh, from, I'm from the Bronx, New York. And it wasn't just about being from the Bronx. Once I got here, it was a bunch of people I met. Uh, from, that helped expand my world, especially being a DJ. I met the folks from Detroit, I met the folks from Chicago, I met one of my roommates was from Florida, so that all that music became real key uh, for me. Plus, my first job, getting on the radio station, all due to Howard relations. My wife is a Howard grad, my son was born at Howard Hospital, so Howard means a whole world to me. Um, and then the, the people when I got here took me under their wing, so it really built that that, that family environment. That's what and that's what Howard means to me. Let me tell you why I adore Howard. To be honest, how a girls date the flyers, baddest of the baddest, and I ain't being biased, perhaps I'm just static. To say that I was a witness, something so exquisite. Howard, women, you kidding? Find them all through the towers. Reason I sneaking in the quad at the hours. Squad is slow hard, was like noir, so perfect. I would miss the shuttle on purpose just to put work in. For these Howard girls, they all work Come on. it. Something about they all a lot of mercy. So we here, Howard Homecoming 2014, the experience. I'm a class of 92. We stand in the front of the incredible fine arts building. This is my minor theater, you know, so I can get my skills up to be a part of television. So this is where it all began for me at age 19. So my young people out here that you don't think you have time for college, I know it's a struggle, but trust me, if you invest in yourself, you invest in your time, you can win it. You're gonna see a lot of great things, you're gonna hear from some amazing people, you're gonna see some great things. So I want you to enjoy this. How I'm coming to experience Mr. Urban Wall Street, be here. Why not? Keep watching, Urban Wall Street. out there, Kamal, Matt, Oscar, Gary, Drake, Larry, how many times, brother, hug, how much fun we done had up in this spot, 
mean, this right here is the, like the ultimate social spot. The food, the camaraderie, you come meet your people. 12 o'clock on the yard, it's Friday. This is the spot to be. Anybody that went to Howard University knows, Blackburn. Let's meet at Blackburn at 12, or we meet at the flagpole. The flag's not flying right now, but Blackburn, if you wasn't at Blackburn, you wasn't at Howard. You gotta love it. So here we are standing in front of the Mordecai Wyatt Johnson building, AKA the A building. You come to Howard University, it's gonna be one of the first places you're gonna to have to come. Get your money, make sure your money's right, your paperwork's right, the administration, your admission, all of that. So this is a very important building. You will not be able to handle business on Howard University day one or day 401 without coming here. Very important building, very important building. It's the A building. Um, uh, historic for so many different reasons. Back in 1989, you know, we had the protest, the takeover. We took over this building, it's real serious. A little bit of history, SWAT landed on the building, they surrounded it, but it was a student standing up for a cause, because at that time, it was a gentleman named Lee Atwater, who was the ex-KKK member, who was looking to be, almost be appointed to the Board of Trustees. That wouldn't have been a good look for us. Uh, currently, the Honorable Raz Baraka, who at that time was Raz Baraka, who was uh, the Vice President of HUSA and April Silva, of course, Akita works on. You've seen both of these individuals in my network. They were student president and vice president, and they made sure that that didn't happen. And after three days of the takeover, we pretty much had our needs met and victorious. The A Building, Mordecai Johnson. Very important, very historic spot. Make sure you visit it. University School of Business. Now I myself was a communications major, though I'm an entrepreneur now and very much business oriented. But a lot of my colleagues definitely got their start here. So if accounting is your desire, marketing, business administration, no matter what, if you feel you're the next future CEO business mogul, Howard University is definitely where you want to be. And you're definitely going to have to get your start at School of Business. School of Business, Howard University, get your mind right. Change the world. Stop playing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Stop. So here we are at Crampton Auditorium, the famous Crampton Auditorium. If you've come to Howard, if you've been here, you've been here. Fashion shows, variety shows, convocations, everything that's important. It's a major spot. This is the auditorium. It all happens here. You gotta love it. H.U. Crampton. School of Architecture and Design and Planning. Now, if you know you have the visionary in mind to create buildings, you want to build skyscrapers, you want to develop cities, or you just want to build incredible houses, this is definitely where you're going to get your start. So, you see all that beautiful fun you can see in the yard, all those festivities? Most of the time, individual school of architecture, you'll miss a lot of that. But you'll enjoy it on the back end because you'll be getting that paper. School of Architecture, Howard University. You gotta love it. Engineering, Lewis K. Downing Building. It's a beautiful situation. Had a lot of friends who went to this school as well. So if you know you're a designer and you wanna, you know, you're very integral with yours, engineering as well. If you're an engineering student, you probably won't spend that much time on campus because you're definitely trying to do what you do. But the rewards are very great. So if you believe that you have the skills and the tenacity and the ability to be an engineer and, and be a great designer, 
Check out the School of Engineering, Lewis K. Downey, Howard University. Gotta love it. Howard University Bookstore. Barnes & Noble, you see this is a beautiful thing. So up in here you find all the paraphernalia from the books, shirts, pins, sweatshirts, alumni. And unfortunately, I don't own any alumni shirt, anything that says Howard, really, that I can rock. So we're about to go up in here and um, see what they got here in the store for me. Let's go. Yo, wait, 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 I hear the people like, hot damn, Trey, it's been a minute. The people like Trey, the game's different. But that don't mean that Trey's still gifted. And I don't go hard, the spit still ain't relentless. But I get it, y'all ain't ready. Y'all still busy cashing out in Rack City. Well, I'ma get busy, put this track out as misery. Simply mash out for everybody that miss me. Black out and send the game in the frenzy. Make them have to weed out the whack, this eventually. Have young as the bees in the trap, like who is he? Little dudes Googling YouTube of my history. Brandy to Britney, all trying to tempt me. Heard that Philly drawl and caught a whiff of the issue. And now I'm about to bars, my guard had an epiphany. Your boy on the Metro, you know, the Howard Experience. So if you come down to DC, when I was in here, you didn't have to go to get you around the city. So this is another part of the Howard Experience, the Metro. We're gonna go down all the way back to the hotel. We just talk about DC and New York. Everything in Metro. This is my turn. Don't forgive me, but the minute I finish, it's a Da Vinci. Hold my disappearance against me, you still can't convince me. This can't be the illest bit of the century. And be the cure like a man in your petty. Get it? Manny, petty, cure, forget it, man. Y'all <laughs> Experience. You see us. We're here at Tony and Joe's Seafood Place on the water, Georgetown. It's a beautiful situation. You see the line. You see the love. It's a beautiful thing. So, how at homecoming experience? If you weren't here this year, 2014, you might want to be here. It's a beautiful situation. Look at the love. It's going to be a great night. Black excellence at its finest. It's Urban Walls. So you see it. We here. Oh man, my people. Let me just stop. This right here is my brother. I'm going to tell you how he's my brother. Freshman year, two weeks in, I got to tell you the story. <laughs> we all finished partying. Some young, pretty young girl at Howard. We got to find Garfield. It's one in the morning. I'm from New York. Who's Garfield? He's lost. He's lost. Man, I don't know Garfield. We walked for hours. When we found him, he was home. Garfield. Y'all know Garfield. If you forgot, multi-platinum recorded all the shies in the building. Garfield, what's good, baby? Man, I'm just here enjoying in the moment, man. I came last year on a fluke, and I had the most fun I had in like 30 years. So I know, I, I told myself then, I'm coming back next year. So here I am. So you know, when I was in Atlanta about a year and a half ago, two years ago, you were doing your thing. So can I call you Dr. Bright yet, or are you closing in? I got, I'm closing in, I gotta still do my comps and defend my perspectives, and then I'll be dissertating about another year and a, and a half at the most. Now I have to say that because you fortunately, unlike anybody else in here, can let these young people know who thirsty and wanna be in that game, you did your thing. Multi-platinum, toured the world, made money, millions. How serious is that game, G? Well, the game is not only serious, but it's rapidly evolving. It's, it's, it's not static, it's fluid. So technology is coming to the game. So there's even though there's a lot more chances to be entrepreneurial in the game and uh, control your own destiny, there's still distribution situations out there. There's still politics involved, and there's still a thrust to basically commodify black culture in a way that denigrates black people. You know, so if you fall into that trap because you're so hungry to be in the game, you are actually in, in in essence an agent to the kind of demise of the black man that's that's, that's being perpetuated. So be careful about how hungry you are for this game. If you're doing it from a pure place, don't let nobody corrupt that pure place. The art and the subject activity combined with what you're doing is a thing that can move and change this paradigm. So if you're really about your game, think of new creative ways to hit people in the head with something that they can take without it being corny. Figure that out. So now you're going to become Dr. Bright soon, you're working your PhD. Let the people know what made you decide to go back to school and not just for your masters, but to become a doctor and what you're studying. And I went to Howard, man. You know, even though Howard is the place, the homecoming place, everybody knows us for all the trend-setting situations. 
we educated up at Howard. We got a tradition to uphold. And so I was in shy. I never felt all the way comfortable without, you know, not having my degree. So I went back and got my, my undergrad degree finally. And I kept matriculating. I got accepted to a master's program. And you know, my, I have sons. I wanted them to see me not as just this entertainer guy, but somebody who actually was known for his substance, you know, up here, so they can have something to look forward to. And I feel like, as a person that's about to be a PhD that came from the R&B world, I'm somewhat of a trendsetter. Nobody's ever done that. Um, I did the research. And so I just feel like the onus is on me to raise the bar, to raise the standards of what can be. So instead of it being either or, you can always do both ends. So I'm just trying to, you know, model that. And he said he's trying to, but he's not trying to. This is Dr. Bright. This is my brother. I love him forever. Those of you know, it's been a, it was a G and E thing a long time ago, and it still is. And we about to turn the game on fire. So you see it, it's black excellence in the building. I'm here with my brother, 20 years strong, super producer, hit man extraordinaire, D-Dot, the mad rapper, Angeletti. What's good, brother? Can I get a pound, my brother? Of course, you know you can get that first salute. Right, so the salute. question of the day, brother, real simple, because we're having fun. How influential has Howard been in the evolution of your life? How influential has Howard been in the evolution of my life? Well, Howard changed my life. Taught me survival skills along with the streets of Brooklyn. Introduced me to a whole new culture that I wasn't aware of. Showed me that there was more than life out there than just Brooklyn. I got to meet people like yourself, some great, influential, powerful, impactful people that helped shape and change the world. So if I had to do it all again, I'd do it the exact same way. Hate you forever, baby. For real. It changed my life. Um, when I was selecting schools my senior year, my father said he was a product of HBCU. My grandmother's product of HBCU. All of my aunts on both sides, they said, you have to go, you have to go. And I came for homecoming my senior year of high school. It changed my life. I made a decision at that point, this is where I want to be because it was empowering to be around African-American people who were all positive, everyone had goals, everyone was striving for something. Um, it made me more confident. It made me, um, I, I just, it's, you can't bottle it. If, if, if someone could bottle it, you'd be a millionaire. Billionaire, a trillionaire. A billionaire, yes. So what's, your, so what's your industry, what's your field? I'm in education. Uh, Queen Holly, always a pleasure to see always you. A pleasure. Urban Wall Street, Howard University, homecoming, the experience. Hey, Keep shoe. watching, it's a beautiful hey, thing. Hey, get the shoes. I got my style from Howard, too. Hello. Oh, man, I'm just glad to be here. Howard saved my life, man, straight up. You know, coming from Detroit in the 80s, there was a lot of drugs and everything was going on during that time. And that me, you know, able to get out of uh, Detroit and come to Howard, best thing that ever happened to me. Now my son goes here. I got uh, two other sons on their way here. I got beautiful friends like you. And just, uh, you know, all kind of beautiful friends is here at this event. So, you know, it's the best thing, you know, that ever happened to me, really. We all come from different places. I come from Detroit, you come from New York. Well, in Detroit, and Detroit is not a small pond, but if it was a small pond, I was a big fish. And I know you were a big fish wherever you came from. So Howard puts together all these big fish from small pond. So now, you're not in your small pond. You're in a river with a whole lot of big fish. And you still have to excel. That's what Howard is. And that's what Howard lets you know. That once you leave there, like you've been around so much exceptional talent, such as yourself. I mean, you're the perfect example. So it inspires you. Like I know I'm in finance. I buy structured settlements. It sells to a certain respect. When I walk in my job, I know nobody can sell better than me because of who I came up around, my lineage, my pedigree, my folks. So that's what Howard is. Howard is the best. So it makes you know that you're the best. And it's that simple. Kings, queens, scholars, professionals, moguls, businessmen, politicians, producers, winners. 
and I'm standing with another winner. 20 years, this is my brother. Fashion shows. <laughs> Shut the game down. I think I'm pretty fly, but my man, this is my man Cameron. Cameron, what's good, baby? Yo, everything's hot, baby. Everything is hot. HU Homecoming 2014, baby, is live. What? All so this day. is the experience, Homecoming experience. But the question of the day is, Cam, how influential has Howard University been to the evolution of your life? Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's been critical. It's been key. HU is the is the mecca. It's the center of everything because um, at the root of everything, no matter where you go, you know you've always got that connection, that bond that just never can be broken. So it's, it's an unspoken code. You got to be from HU to know HU. Well, so, so yo, how has the night been? Has it been incredible? This is just crazy. I mean, Mother Nature cooperated with us. The breeze is just blowing. The breeze is flowing. We're giving love to everybody. I mean, it's just amazing. This is one of those have to be here kind of events. It's got to be experienced. It can't be explained. And that's why it's called Howard Homecoming. Homecoming. The experience. Period. The Mecca. HU. I mean, this is what it's all about for generations. This is where it's been, and it will continue. HU, man. And this is just day one. Wait till tomorrow uh, on the yard. Woo! I'm there all day. Make sure you see me. For sure. All right, for sure. Wow. Howard University changed my whole perspective. It took me from a real narrow scope and just broadened my horizon. It wasn't just the classroom learning. It's building with brothers like yourself. It's building with my dudes from Florida. Understanding that only thing that's different than us is the vernacular. We all had the same hustle. You know what I'm saying? We all came from the same struggle. And so it made my world it made, a, it made a big world so much smaller because I had brothers that I didn't really realize. And now we got 25 years of friendship, son. I done known you longer than I knew cats that I grew up with. You know what I'm saying? And then you get to see people progress, and we get to see each other build. Like seeing you holding a mic, seeing you on, on, on different doing different interviews with different celebrities, all the people we get to build with, all the match to the world, people putting all these big projects together. You got Raz as the mayor. Son Howard is the, it's, it's the mecca for real, and sometimes we, we say it, and we don't really internalize like how, how much truth is in that. And it, it's a melting pot, it's a cauldron of people just coming together, and it, it's just love, man. Like how you, you know, Howard University changed my life, my dude. And I haven't missed a homecoming in 25 years. You understand what I'm saying? So here's the question of the day for all of our people. Yes. How influential has Howard University been in the evolution of your life? Wow. You know, being at HU, it was the best decision I've ever made. I was really supposed to go to Spelman, and I winded up going to Howard, because once my father passed away, he wanted me to go to Howard, because my oldest brother went to Howard. So, if my father wouldn't have passed away, I would have never been here, and I never went to, would have moved to New York, and I never would have been able to do what I'm doing now. Because that didn't happen, but being at HU was influential, because all of us, especially in our class, we were all hustlers, we grinded, we stayed as a family, we worked really hard and we've continued to maintain amazing relationships after college and, and as we move forward. So it's great. It, it's a part of who I am now. Not only who I am, I got two sons who are uh, 12 and 14. Who my, my son at four years old, he said, Daddy, can I go to Howard University? Because I would put I would put that in their mind. In green. They, no, right. Yo, it's been it's been everything. First of all, shouts out to Leland Bruckner Cal Gardens, my man right here, and Monroe, my man. But yo, it's been everything. Yo, these these relationships are for a lifetime. It's not your four years and you're done. It's for your life. Kids, marriage, funerals, everything. This crew is here for you. I know. I'm speaking, I'm speaking from personal experience. It's my family. It's my family. That's real easy. It is, it is because of how university my life evolved. It's, it's that simple. Coming here during that particular era is one of the most powerful things that I could have ever imagined. Remember, I couldn't even imagine it. That we, we, we went through a time where we got moguls in business, politics, entertainment, education, you name it, we've got it all. And we are so tightly linked that it doesn't matter. We are here at one of our people's, or two of our people's party. We're here with the president of the university. We, the mayor of Newark just walked in. Congressmen are here. Lawyers are here. My man Tone is here. Takiyah is in the house. 
Yo, it, 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 yo, we are we are probably the most gifted group, most blessed group of college family that's ever existed. I believe that. Period. I, you know, I have to. I would have to say, but unequivocally, yes. And right now, we've got there are at least ten friends I know who are here who are, whose kids are at Howard right now. Yes. The legacy is The legacy is crazy. Crazy. Listen. Howard University, homecoming, the experience, passion, faith, drive, commitment, determination, excellence, perseverance, resilience. We encompass it all. You have it, young people. It's in you. We were you. You are us. Pick an HBCU. We say Howard, but we love them all. But put yourself in position to be empowered. Put yourself in position to be inspired, to be motivated, and to most of all, motivate and inspire someone else. It took some time for me to see. I pose no punches, flows in abundance. Steve Howard alumnus among us. And the excellence continues. You see Queens, the one thing you've heard all night is bonds, friendships. These two incredible women have been best friends for a long time. My sister Alicia, my girl Tracy, they do amazing things. How are you ladies? Absolutely. Happy homecoming. Welcome Happy home. homecoming. So here's the question of the day, and I'm at each one of you respectively. How influential has Howard been in the evolution of your life? I would say Howard taught me that if you have a dream and you have a goal, let nothing stop you. It taught you how to keep on going no matter what the odds. And to be successful, and that's what we do at Howard. That's what we do. Tracy. And for me, um, Howard has shown me what family means, you know. I, and I grew up with a wonderful family, but there's something special about the HU family that no one understands unless you're a part of the HU family. So that bond is very strong. Howard has definitely shown me that. And Howard has also shown me that we have to continue. We must continue to build our school and support our school and give back to our school because there are so many generations behind us that need to experience this. Yeah. Hey man, it's great to be here once again, man, at Howard Homecoming, man. So check it. Y'all do moves and shakers. First thing, Ben, you did something. Let them know. My man Ben, you he, he not just, you know, we not, I'm not a military man. <laughs> you silly man. But my man Ben was when he was at college. You know, he didn't care about, you know, how we looked at him in the hat. He did his thing. <laughs> and now years later, tell him, tell, tell him who you are, brother. Tell him who you are. I hung in the military for a little bit. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard, uh, captain here in the Washington, D.C. area. But my main hustle is real estate in Detroit. So if you need some commercial real estate, look me up. No, that's <laughs> Uh, yes, man. It's good to be here, man. And I, I tell you what, man. Howard has been so influential, man, on my say my life, my career, my personal life, man. Um, Howard has afforded me to, you know, link with companies, man, and, and have experiences around the world, a lot, a lot in Latin America, Brazil, Mexico. Um, and now, man, it's just been, you know, consulting for many years, man. What industry has been? Technology consulting. Technology. Digital marketing. <laughs> so, Ben. International player. There. International <laughs> player. You see, we do it. So, Ben, how yeah. influential has Howard been in the evolution of your life, brother? Oh, man, it's been monumental, man. I met great people from all over the country. Every place I go, I run into Howard folks. I'm uh, so proud and happy with my experience. I sent my daughter here, who's going to graduate as a senior this year from Howard. Woo! Congrats, We're keeping it in the family. Oh, <laughs> Let me tell you how hard this cat is on Howard University. I came to Howard University because I went to high school with this guy. Because he was a year ahead of me. And when I'm looking for mentors, looking for places to go, and like thinking about school, these cats and brothers like Ben turning us on, our younger brothers on, to again have this type of experience, which you, you know very well. How influential has Howard been in the evolution of your life? Oh wow, I tell you, it's been amazing. It's been, I've been able to learn the aspects of the, not only just the knowledge I received from school, but to be able to teach around the country and let people know that there's bigger things out in the universe other than just going to high school, right? Because at the end of the day, it has allowed me 
to really open my mind and really take all the knowledge that I see day to day and being at Howard University, you know, I'm just really excited right now to be honest with you guys. I'm really extremely excited because I've been able to really lock arms and bond with a lot of people, not only at Howard University, but it allowed me to network and really, really optimize my network of people across the country as well. So I'm really proud, I'm really excited, I'm very happy that I went to Howard University. Oh, yo, Howard was the reason that Shy is here, you know what I mean? Uh, first of all, my group is locked tight and solid, but then all of our surrounding supporting cast, you know, all of our friends supported us, called the radio station, made Shy what it is. You know what I mean? I can't say no more. Howard is what it is. Straight up. Howard University, Howard Homecoming Experience 2014, Tony and Joe's on the water. So you see black excellence from entertainers, from lawyers, doctors, politicians, real estate moguls, producers. It's a beautiful thing. So it's not always about entertainment. Get yourself off the block, educate your mind develop friendships that will last for lifetimes, and you will satisfy those dreams. Urban Wall Street, on location, how a homecoming. It's a beautiful thing. Keep watching. We here. I know it took a long time, but hey, man, it feels good to be home, you know? Huh. It's been one hell of a journey, man. Got off course prematurely, and found the Lord in Atlanta, trained in Louisiana, and came back an attorney, fam. Wow. Howard has had an amazing impact on my life. There's absolutely no question about it. I can't even imagine where I would be today had I not come to this university. When I was in high school, my English professor was a Howard alum, and she said there's one place you need to be, Howard University. When I was in high school, my social studies professor was a Howard alum, and one thing he said to me was that you gotta get to Howard University. When I was in high school, my junior year, we had a class trip where a bunch of us, um, I didn't get to go, uh, came down to Howard. And when they came back, they were completely transformed. And I said, you know what? I got to be at Howard University. And so with that said, I have to say that my experience at Howard has absolutely changed me, my family, and the people around me. We're here. And we try, what am I, I don't say trying, because we don't try at Howard. This is the experience. We were fortunate and blessed to be a part of a legacy, a part of a, a period at Howard that's unparalleled. But the one thing I want all of my people that are doing different things in different arenas to share their experience with the industry and how influential Howard was in your life. Whoa, that's, that's big, that's big right there. Um, I think Howard taught you how to like, how to hustle, like, like it was about, Making it happen and, and like like learning business, like business school was crazy and dog, it just was it was influential in my life. Yeah. So how is so you went to Howard, we was here, you got your knowledge, we had fun, and then you graduated. And since you graduated, how have you, how has the lessons and the, the relationships and the knowledge of self empowered and evolved your life? <laughs> Those are real questions right now, dog. Um, so I'm in healthcare right now. I think, like I said, it it, 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 it it taught me how to play the game, so to speak, and, and develop those relationships and cultivate those things, you know what I'm saying? And so through that, I was able to, to, to succeed in the things that I'm doing. I'm a consultant right now, healthcare, um, it is good. And as far as relationships, Absolutely, I leverage those relationships to get where I am. And then it's all about, for me, pulling up the next dude, helping the next man. You know what I'm saying? So that's yes. what I'm about, right? Say now. that again. Yeah. It's all about helping the next up, man, pulling the up the next man. man. Absolutely. Not like what we normally see from our people. Absolutely. Howard has absolutely contributed to the success that I've had in my life. I don't actually think I would be the woman that I am today without having attended Howard University. I was a very young lady when I came here and just stepping on the ground with so many influential people have been and so many great minds and so many different types and walks of uh, black people from all different types and walks of life just amazed me and it just really influenced me and it kept me on my grind because I was surrounded by people who were brilliant you know doing things making moves so it made me hustle 
hustle. And hustle. Hustle. Hard. <laughs> right, hustle. And I respect her so much because I believe, was that, what, 28? You had your PhD? No, you I, got my, I got my PhD at 33. I got my master's from Howard as well. And I got my master's when I was 22, 23. And then I got my doctorate by the time I was 33. And right now I have a practice in D.C. And it's doing very well. So, And that's all. What more can I say? What more can we say? Black excellence at its finest. Howard Homecoming, you gotta love it. That's right. Howard University, to me, is family. It's an extended family. I tell you what, I, my brother Earl right here, that's, that's, that's he's, he's from the Bronx, but it goes beyond, it's like worldwide. I can go every part of this nation and find my family. Howard University, I, I tell you what, it's the greatest experience in life. Make sure, make sure you, make sure if you have children out there, send them to Howard University. So now I know we got something real big coming up, you know, in a couple of days. Let them know what's happening. Okay, I'm, uh, like Earl said, I'm an artist. Uh, Wednesday, October 22nd, uh, it's on Orchard Street. It's, it's uh, uh, in fact, another brother from Howard University is a curator, Greg Cummins. We all know him as China, but it's going to be a big event. Uh, the theme of the show is called Time. Make sure you come out and see my latest piece. It's, it's crazy. It's called Timeless Beauty. You're going to love it. Sure. Urban Walsh, you know, Howard University, you know, we're always about the brightest and the best. We do amazing things. We have artists. We have producers. We have doctors, lawyers, real estate persons, business owners. So we're so much more as a people than what we may be represented as in the media. We're so much more than just rappers or ball players or athletes. Get your mind right. Build your network. Develop lifetime plans. Howard University really should come, but make an HBCU. So the HBCU will let you know who you are and who you can become. Hey, hey, before we go, make sure, make sure you get back to HBCU. Get back. Come on. Get back. Urban Wall Street. Howard Homecoming. We're doing our thing. How influential has Howard been in the involvement of your life? Very influential. I came into Howard when I was 16. I came through Howard with honors, partied hard, played hard, pledged AK, and then it was a great honor to be accepted to Howard Med School. So going through Howard from an undergraduate perspective and a medical perspective, and then now my main love is because of the Howard influence. It now allows me to mentor so many of the Howard current students as well as alums. You got to get back. And just let them know real quick where they can see some of your columns. Yes, they can see some of my columns um, in Hype Hair. I'm the medical director of Hype Hair for 15 years. Also, you can read my information in Sister Sister Magazine. Oh gosh, Earl. Um, listen to me on the Steve Harvey radio show. Ed Gordon just added me to his show. Um, I don't know. A whole bunch of stuff. Infinite, <laughs> infinite excellence. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Melanie Macklin, this is my sister, I love her. HU yes. Homecoming, the experience 2014, Tony and Joe's, Georgetown on the water. Trust me, your life can be great. Don't believe everything you see on television. It's a beautiful, beautiful situation. Howard Homecoming, you gotta love it. Yes, love it. Thank you, baby. Howard was very influential in my life. It taught me things that I thought I'd never learn, especially being from Memphis, Tennessee in a small environment. And it also, Broaden my horizon so that I could stay in D.C. longer and deal with more cultures, learn about different cultures, and also attend Howard for grad school, for dental school. Those are the best years of my life. I couldn't have asked for anything better than to attend Howard University. Well, how much time do we have for that? Because I, I, I can tell you, I think that's an outstanding question first and foremost. Um, Howard University, everything that I do, everything I've touched, has always and will always come back to, to the Mecca. Um, through the professors, through the relationships such as you and myself, man, knowing each other for such a long time, through my queen, my wife, Dr. Melanie Macklin, um, everything I've ever done always and will have a stamp of Howard University. So uh, the legacy continues, brother. I, I look forward to my daughters going there and, and it never having an ending. And let them know what your industries are, G. Sure. Well, by trade, I'm an environmental engineer. I have an environmental consulting firm. My wife is Dr. Melanie Macklin, who happens to be a celebrity dermatologist. And in addition to that, right now I'm getting into own business 
business ownership um, and the network marketing game because I saw that really as implementing really what HU taught us. And that is the secret to success is to help other people become successful. But they don't have a vehicle to do that. So I, I utilize that industry to really take it to that end. Oh my God. Wow, that's a tough question to answer only because Howard has been like extremely influential in my life. First of all, I, I'm a native Washingtonian, so I grew up watching Howard as a kid, like in high school. I was coming to Howard Homecoming when I was in high school, trying to experience what was going on at Howard even then. But Howard is an amazing place because the first and foremost, Howard gave me the education that has allowed me to achieve what I have in life. Besides that, how it allowed me to experience the relationships that I've used in business every single day. My former business partners, colleagues, clients, like, I can't even number, enumerate the amount of relationships that I have because of Howard and how it's allowed me to generate business, to make money, to have uh, people just to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis that enhances my life, my family, everything. Howard is the most amazing place in the world. I'm happy to be here. Happy homecoming. <laughs> no doubt. And listen, you don't know, he's a power play. He's very humble. But Google, check the stats. Ian Niles is definitely the man. And I love him. He's my brother. And, you know, Howard University, what can I say? Ian Niles, Mr. Urban Wall Street, Howard Homecoming, the experience. 2014, Tony and Joe's on the water. Georgetown. Happy to be here, baby. It's a beautiful time, baby. Happy homecoming. Happy homecoming. <laughs> It's probably been the most influential. You know, my mother went to Howard back in the day when SNCC was, you know, coming about. She was in SNCC. She was one of the uh, the student advocates. So I was raised with that. And then being able to walk on the yard myself and experience that, take Dr. Olive Taylor's class, sit in the back of Raz Baraka, and that socioeconomic, you know, imprint just stays with you. So I, that's one of the reasons why I got involved in politics is, you know, I can't see the suffering and I do something about it. You know, Howard taught me either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. There it is. Now, unfortunately, many individuals may not know what SNCC, especially our young generation. So let them know exactly what SNCC, that acronym represents, John. Yep. Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. So the students played a critical role with Dr. King and Malcolm X and other civil rights leaders. The students were, were really the freedom riders, the, the, the sit-in leaders, the people that really led the change and forced the businesses to confront if they wanted to continue their racist ways or they wanted to open up their economic opportunities. I want the people to know, listen, Gussie's Chicken and Waffles, if you up in California, in the Bay Area, if you're in the United States, you're in Africa, you need to check it out. Let them know. Yes, you need to check out Gussie's Chicken and Waffles in San Francisco. Come through, we got you covered. Right. So now the question of the day is, and I'm going to ask both of you independently, how influential has has Howard been in the evolution of your life? I'll start. Howard has been extremely influential for me. When I came to Howard, obviously I came as a freshman and you know I was shy and everything, but Howard really teaches you how to grind, teaches you how to hustle. So it's such a balance between a wonderful education and at the same time just that innate you know, hustle in you. It really teaches you how to get out there and hit the pavement and do what you need to do to make it happen. Okay. Lisa? Howard was an amazing, amazing experience. I chose it because I knew it was the mecca of all HBCUs. It's given me a foundation that I've never lost. Incredible friends, an incredible foundation for building a career, an incredible foundation for just knowing who I am as a black woman. That's right. And it's been amazing to me. I mean, I, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. That's right. Yeah. Extremely influential. It's um, my relationships, like you mentioned, the network. Um, my son is looking forward. He's 13. He's looking forward to coming here. He, it's his homecoming, not my homecoming. Um, I've my own business. I mean, it's Howard. My sister, the next queen. It's been very influential to me. I have been owning my business for 15 years now. I have an advertising agency, and it helped me to be independent and to develop who I am. So Howard University has been so influential in my life. It has completely mapped out my entire future. If it wasn't for Howard, I would not be the attorney that I am. I wouldn't have the career that I have, and I wouldn't be shaping the minds of the young lawyers of tomorrow. I love Howard University. 
Now, how does it feel to be at homecoming? Oh, it's incredible. I love it. I won't miss homecoming ever. Every year, I will be at homecoming. So how long have you been the law professor at Howard? I'm in my second year at Howard University, and I'm the clinical law professor for the Child Welfare Family Justice Clinic. So we represent parents in family law cases in D.C. Are you loving? Love it. I love it. A, a lot of the friends that I made at Howard became colleagues of mine in the workforce. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a time when, and I've known Rodney for well over 25 years, there was a time when Rodney was my manager. And we were colleagues at the Washington Post. I think Rodney still works there. Uh, we had a great time, great working relationship. It was a lot easier dealing with somebody that you, you've known for so long and a lot different, you know, than the normal you know, wear and tear of, of corporate life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Howard was everything for me. I mean, I maintain relationships with brothers like Terrence and, and so many others. And we're going on 25 years. I mean, I can look at you in your face and remember when you were 18. And there's nothing but love between me and you. We teach our children. We encourage our children to be educated. And we speak about love, black love and being educated. And that's what Howard, that's why Howard was so influential because our relationships are so strong still today. Whether we're partying, uh, talking about politics, talking about issues, it's strong. And it's based on love, experience, and just the fact that we were 18, 19, 20 years old together. And no one can take that away from us. Howard University has been the most important thing in my life for 20 years. The friends, the family, the... Um, intellectual prospects that we've created, the businesses, the millions that we've made. We've made millions of dollars. All of us, collectively, we've made millions of dollars, and um, I love it. This is actually pretty easy for me. Uh, most of my education, especially my high school years, I was in a predominantly white Catholic school. So while the education was excellent, it wasn't until I got to Howard that I could see how far that just um, being black does not hold you back. Like there are no excuses, and there's no um, there's no whole bar that you do nothing but excel. And so it's nice seeing people around you that look like you, um, that gives you that confidence. Because then once you move out into the you know the workforce, you get in some positions that you'll never see anybody in a boardroom looking like you. But it don't matter because HU prepares you for that. So it's all good. Right, Sterling. Same question, brother. Oh yeah, Howard was very influential in my life. I mean, not only the education that was essential, but also the people that I met. Over the years, 20 years we've known each other, and over the years I've known other people, they've helped me and, and led me along. It's just the family that we've created from Howard just continues to help you grow, you know, and 20 years later still, here we go, still with friends, still doing things. It's that family atmosphere that has helped us to keep growing. That's what really influenced my life. Wow. In every aspect of my life, Howard has shown up, like, in a major way. I can go to any state in this United States of America, and there's always somebody waiting for me with open arms. There's always a hookup. There's always somebody who has my back. I'm so glad I went to HU. That's all I have to say about that. I have to say, going to the Mecca changed my life. I'm so confident. I enjoy life. I live life because Howard gave me that experience. It helped me learn how to be a woman. It helped me how learn how to be independent and take charge. Howard taught me so many things, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Howard's changed my life. It's made me who I am today. It's taught me to be strong. Howard has definitely made me, helped me become the man that I am today. You know? Sean, I came in as a boy. Howard made me a man. This is my barber. He said, he said uh, the high pompadour, he used to hook me up, everything. But yo, Howard made me a man. I brought my son down here. My baby's mother is from Howard. Yo, Howard did everything for me, man. Nothing else I can say. So I don't know, what's your industry, Sean? 
I'm in um, data governance, so I manage data on a global company, Jones Lang LaSalle. Troy, what's your industry? I am a producer editor. I work for BET, been there for 15 years, been in the industry for 20 years, and hey, thank you, Howard. Absolutely influential. I had a full ride to at least 20 schools, got no money from Howard, came to Howard, the best decision ever, have lifelong friends, making my daughter come next year, even though she doesn't want to, making her come because it was that influential. Game changer. Oh, man. Let me tell you something right now. HU, if you don't know nothing about HU, just come to Howard. Because at the end of the day, everybody's family. When everybody leaves to go to different countries, they're back home to the different city states, you're connected. You're, any network you have is nothing because everyone is the same. No matter how much money you got, no matter where you're going, everyone it treats everybody the same, no matter where you are, worldwide, international, globally. You can be in Australia, Switzerland, Harlem. It don't even matter. If you say from Howard, Kids going to show you mad love. That's what I love about the school, man. And if you don't know, that, this is meant to DC. Let me explain something to you, B. Let me explain something to you. Yo, how University has changed my life. I have students here, and I explain to them, it will change your life. You are part of a family that's bigger than something that you would never, ever conceptualize. Yo, know, listen, my first time on campus, 1986, the quad. When I saw the young ladies there, I was like, listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said the same I'm thing. I'm not here. going home. I'm coming here. I'm coming here. I said and then, the same and thing. then I, I came here. The I came thing. here. I had a girlfriend. And I was like, yo, listen. It was bigger than it was bigger than the women. It was like Howard University is American history. Period. If you don't believe me, Google it. We are in like the the the, the technology that we have now. Google it. Go on. Just type Howard University. Look at alum. You couldn't sit. You can't sit in a classroom today if it wasn't for Howard University. And that's real talk. Real talk. You better know. So therefore, first, we are the mecca. Listen. 1867. And, and, don't get early. Today. I don't care if you went to an HBCU. I don't care if you didn't go to HBCU. As black folk, we need to support our institutions because that's the only thing that we have, and that is us. It is us 100 percent. And if you do not believe that, listen. You know, you're losing something. You know, the schools are not going to tell you this. Your, your guidance counselors nope. are not going to tell you this. Nope. You need to know that HBCUs are us. All right, so listen. The night has been amazing. But Howard University is about legacies. It's about kings. I'm standing next to Dr. Frederick, who was in my class, who is the current president, not of Husa, the president of Howard University. Frederick, what's good, sir? All right. So listen, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. And I know you're going to do the thing. Sure. The, but I'm going to give you the same question that I've given all your esteemed colleagues and alumni. Sure. How has Howard University influenced your life sure. and influenced the evolution of your life? When I came to Howard University, the arc of the impossible was in front of me. The arc of the possible was behind me. Howard University put the arc of the possible in front of me. It gave me an opportunity for self-realization. So Howard University has meant everything to me. So now, so so being the president, the president, how does it feel to be the president? Are you partying with the people that you was in class with? How does it feel, bro? Yeah, you know, it's, it's humbling. It's, it's an honor. I, I love the place, but more importantly, I love the people. And, I, and the, the people are so committed to the university that it's a very humbling honor. And I'm glad to be at the head of the flagship. Brother, I know I'm going to see you. I'm going to let you continue partying and enjoy yourself. But I know it's a, it's a tough job running the number one HBCU co-ed in the nation and in the world. Howard Homecoming, the experience 2014. Day two, Saturday. The Yard. You ever been to Howard Homecoming? Those of you who have been alumni, my people, you know the yard. We about to go to the yard, y'all. <laughs> Keep watching. The yard is amazing. Happy Homecoming 2014. Oh, this is everything. Going out.
now is the best four years of my life and it's been the best 25 since. Met the best friends of life, lifelong friendships, connections, just this love and friendship, just peace, just black people doing things, bonds of life, brotherhood, sisterhood is like the most beautiful thing ever. Listen, my people out there, I'm standing in front of, for me, the most famous restaurant in D.C. I started eating at this restaurant, this establishment, 25 years ago. And now I have the pleasure of standing with the current owner, Emar Hutchins. I'm talking about the Florida Avenue Grill. How are you, brother? Doing good. How are you? And we're blessed to be here. Listen, my production partner had never been to the Florida Avenue Grill. Two years ago, I came for homecoming, and okay. one of my colleagues, my clients, he had never been here. I brought him here. He ordered a little bit of everything on the menu. How could you not Couldn't come take to the it, grill? Right? <laughs> brought my brother here, Alan. Okay. You had Florida Avenue Grill? You've been in D.C. a lot? Never. You've never been here? You got to come. So I'll make it a business, number one, I to bring everybody here. That. First, I want to say, listen, it's established since 1944, and um, you look a little bit young, so I don't think I was you, very young when I started. Started right. it. <laughs> so tell me, so tell me yeah. how long you've been the owner? I've been the owner for nine years. I bought it nine years ago. And I built the building that you see there next to it. On, that's the former parking lot of the grill. Um, it's called the Lacey. It's named in honor of uh, Lacey Wilson, who is the Lacey. founder of the grill. And Lacey Sr. founded it. Lacey Jr. bought it from him in 1940, uh, 1970. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. So are you a, a Washingtonian? I'm not a native Washingtonian. I'm a New Yorker, but I I, I live here now, yeah. Because I'm from Brooklyn. What part all right, of New York? Harlem. Harlem, okay, yeah. brother. So, all right, all right. so hold up. So I won't you, hold that against you, man. <laughs> so, you, so you brought your talents down to D.C. Oh, yeah. You did this. How'd you, how'd you come to find about the opportunity to purchase this? And um, definitely when you said you, you purchased this building as no, well? No, I built that building. You built this building. Yeah, so you're an architect. I'm a developer. You're a developer. Yeah. So now, so you have a, you, I'm assuming you have a nice condo in this building right here next to us? No, no, actually I don't because we. I just moved here, actually. So... Wow, so you built, built this building, yeah. and then you bought this right here next. Now, this used to be the parking lot right. of the grill. So right. I bought the grill and the parking lot, and I just, to me, it was important to keep the grill. Most developers would have torn it down to get a couple more apartments. To me, this is a piece of D.C. history, face of American history, really. It's the oldest uh, soul food restaurant in the country, actually uh, in the world, and it's... It's actually the oldest African-American restaurant of any kind. So we just had our 70th anniversary. Wow. It was a great event uh, last Saturday, two Saturdays ago. Uh -huh. And you know, we're looking forward to the next 70 years, God willing. So Emo, where'd you attend college? I went to Morehouse. Morehouse. Yeah. I won't hold that no, against I was about you. to say, don't hold it against me. Don't hold it against me. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> so, yeah. so now you developed this building. Yeah. So you bought the you bought the flood out in the grill. Yeah. It was a parking lot for the grill. I remember Yeah, that. you remember, remember now. now, yeah. And then you decided, I'm going to develop a building. What made you develop this? And this looks pretty nice. Pretty, 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 pretty nice. modern, yeah. Well, um, to me, I thought it had to be um, modern, it had to be forward to match kind of the spirit of the people who founded this. You know, the guy who founded this was a shoeshine man on Capitol Hill. He saved up his tips and he started it back in 1944. And those people, that was not a conservative thing to do. That, they were bold when they did that, and I felt like we had to be bold with whatever we did to just be on par with, the, with those ancestors that came before us. And really, um, you know, it took a lot of vision and determination to make it last this long, and we want to kind of project forward what, what we see for the future. So we've kind of, we, we're kind of re, relaunching, reinvigorating, rethinking the grill right now. And they, yeah, look, look for some exciting things from us. In, right. So I'm going to ask you this question, yeah. and, and again, I'm not going to hold it against you, right. and I'm sure you can still, and I'm sure you can still answer this question. <laughs> okay. How at Homecoming the experience, that's what I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. And the theme of the weekend has been how had Howard University influenced the development of your life or the evolution of your life. Okay. So I'm going to ask you that because, you know, you're still in the top three. Okay. HBCU. So how has being a Morehouse graduate or how has Morehouse okay. influenced the evolution of your life? Well, you could ask me about Howard because my wife went to Howard also. Well, well you definitely was influenced. Oh, I was going to say. You knew say. Where it from <laughs> life, okay? But how has, how has Morehouse, that, yeah. that HBCU okay. in particular, and being an all-male, mm -hmm. as a person of co-ed, right. how has being a Morehouse man influenced the evolution of your life? Well, it's definitely a big part of my life. I mean, my really my best friends are, are brothers I met when I was at Morehouse. Um, those former of years are very important and you know you can't really overstate the value of that it kind of gives you the foundation for whatever you're going to do in your life and if you um i think that we were just talking i was just talking with somebody about like the kind of 
journey that the black colleges are going through right now, I think that it's really more important for, than ever for them to like rethink themselves to really remain relevant. I mean, we're in an age where, for example, the president of the United States is black. The valedictorian of Morehouse was white. I mean, things are things are things are different now, and it, it really calls for like a rethinking of black colleges and what their role should be. I personally think it should be about their mission. It should be more than just partying. It should be more than just uh, grades, even uh, book learning, like it, so to speak. Like when I was at Morehouse, and it was a different era, but there was like a lot of things that were like almost like required of Morehouse guys that weren't, it was other students, your classmates and upperclassmen and people, you know, making, kind of like mandating each other, and I'm sure you know what I mean, to, to like raise themselves up, right. you know? So since you, so since you clearly have the best of both worlds, how has Howard influenced the evolution of your okay. life? Well, very, in a very big way, of course, as I said, my wife is, is a Howard Bison, you know, died in the war, Howard and Howard Law School. But obviously the grill, I mean, the grill is like an integral part of the Howard story. I mean, I meet a lot of old timers that come in here and say, well, when I was in school, I didn't have any money. And you know, Mr. Wilson, he fed me anyway. You know, like there was, this is one of only four businesses that, to survive segregation, black businesses in DC that survived from the old days. So like a lot of that history is being lost. And it's our goal to really, we see ourselves almost like stewards, um, more than owners. We see ourselves like in a stewardship type of model. Like we're trying to preserve this for the next generations to come. Yes, yes, this is a beautiful thing. Listen, the Florida Avenue girl, listen, you can't come to DC without it. Now I can tell you it's on a, the corner of 11th Street and Florida Avenue in Northwest DC. Is there anything, the one thing you want one person to know out there um, from your perspective, you know, just what this whole DC and this environment just means for you, brother? Well, you know, there's a lot of change in DC now. And I think that it's important to like keep some of the, the old, you know what I mean? Like, when I did this, I very deliberately did not tear down the grill, you know? Like, I preserved that. So I think that, you know, everything, when I built them, when I started building it, they were like, you're gonna build a glass building there, all they're gonna do is break the windows. This is a different neighborhood, even uh, that few years ago, less than 10 years ago. So all the change is good, right? But in the process, we have to be careful that we don't lose like some of the fabric of DC. Like this is a slice of like real DC and there's not a lot of that left. Every day, another piece is going. So I think we have to make a more concerted effort to preserve some of that, that soul that, you know, DC is known for. Yes, yes. Yeah. Brother Emar, listen, man, it's a Thanks beautiful a thing. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm so blessed and I'm privileged to know that someone took this and made sure it was not destroyed for a next dollar or a next whatever, right. you know? The recognition that we have to preserve our community, we have to preserve our heritage, we have to educate and show the next generation why it's important. And then at the same time, preserve our heritage, we gotta preserve the old, and we couple it with the new. Exactly. We couple it, we make that fusion. So you don't have to give up who you are. You don't have to give up where you came from to be a part of where you are and where you're going. Urban Wall Street, Howard Homecoming the Experience, 2014. Brother, Thanks. continue Thanks lessons, all right? Yes, sir, okay. man. Yes, Florida Avenue Grill, DC, you gotta love it. Check this out, right? We was chilling like villains in Meridian Hill. The hilltop. The hill, the hill, you know what it is, 16th Street. We chilling, it was me, Raz, my man Earl, the barber, Don C, Sean from Philly. Man, we was doing it crazy, man. We were cooking up. I mean, we ain't had nothing, but we made something out of it. You know what I'm saying? We cook on the little grills every day, oodles and noodles. All that stuff. All that stuff. I was promoting parties, then I jumped into promoting parties, doing like uh, Rhonda Berry House Sundays at the Ritz nightclub. Then I said, yo. I can't be going all the way to Silver Spring to get a haircut. I said, yo, Earl, what's up, man? He said, yo, I got these clippers. I'm nice with it. Everybody had the fades. I'm talking about Big Daddy King, Special Ed had nothing on us. Our fades were crazy. But Earl, the Earl the Barber, took his time, had people fighting to get little spots to, to, to get the appointments. And you're talking about like 400 flat tops. 
waiting in line trying to get this man to cut their hair because we all loved and trusted him with the clippers. He was nice with it. Everybody knew on campus, oh, that's Earl the Barber cut. We could tell that's Earl the Barber because the gradation was right. The smoothness gradation was right. There was no bold cut. Gradation. <laughs> it was right. The blend was nice. He was he was a master with it. I was, was like, yeah, that's Earl Barber cut right there. We could tell. And he, yo, and that's how we survived. That's how he made his money. I made my money off the parties. He made his money off the Clippers. It was a beautiful thing, man, for real. Meridian Hill to death. Earl the Barber roll call. Raz Barack oh. roll call. Let's go. Ron we made us now. Sorcerer. We made us now. We are super <laughs> made us now. It's a beautiful thing, man. So you see it, Shy, legendary, multi-platinum, D. Die, D. Die, the mad rapper, all about the Benjamins, Hitman, original, If I Ever Fall In Love, Comforter, Baby I'm Yours, the hits go on and on, Howard University Legends, it's a beautiful situation, HBCUs, baby, Howard. That, that, that thing last night? It's crazy. That thing last night. Yeah, that water front you know, is beautiful. Is special you got going on right there. Was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Class is special right there. I feel you. Right, Gordon, you know Gordon, Gordon yeah. Gottrells. <laughs> Go, yeah, Gordon, yeah. Gordon Gottrells or something yeah, like. Gordon. It's a hot yeah. two forward. Yo, you winning, son. Yeah, I'm happy for Urban Wall Street for real. Urban Wall Street is that business, man. It's global. They're everywhere, man. I love what you're doing, man, for real. That's real. This is what you see right here is entities that went about their business made some money, made some business, made a difference, and we come back to celebrate. Yep. You know what I mean? Every, Every year, year, we come back year. to celebrate. Right. Singing, yeah. rapping, interviewing, directing, producing, promoting, real yes. estate. We made it. We about to go to Mars in a few, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're, we're about to get it popping, man. So let's get a little bit of right here. All right, yo, no, no. All right, yo check this out, yo. My man, get Eric Sherman right there. Eric Sherman's in the house real quick. <laughs> You gotta get Eric Sherman in the house, AKA Wiley Coyote. You know what I'm saying? And for real, I'm real. I'm the real headliner here. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And, and if I ever fall in love, it really be to me. You know what I mean? It was if I'm if I'm ever the mad rapper, that's the name the name of the new song. And I'm gonna be the fifth member singer with them in the background. I got all the bass parts. Right. I'm doing all the all the low parts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, Holla Homecoming, The Experience, 2014, yeah. Howard Theatre, The Reunion, yeah. it's time for brunch, That's it's a beautiful thing, out. Legends, A2, yeah. we outta here! Out. Two kicks and the cypher, shout out Ron Lawrence, we did this too, okay. right here. Yeah. Howard University, first of all, for me, was the only school that I actually applied to. I, to spite my parents, I got scholarships to a bunch of colleges, I turned on all my scholarships just to come to Howard, to spite my parents. When I got here, before I got here, they said to me, we can't afford to send you there. I said, I don't care. I came anyway with no money, no support per se. I got here and I was embraced by other students, friends, faculty, like people just took, like sort of kind of took me in. Uh, it was a struggle and everything. But the thing is about Howard, what I learned, first of all, if you were in, I, I say to people, Drew Hall was my college experience. If you didn't live in Drew Hall, I feel for you, gentlemen. But Drew Hall, for me, was my college experience. First semester, Drew Hall. The reason I say that is after first semester at college, everything else is just school. Your first semester is where you meet your friends. Your first semester is where you start feeling who you are and uh, getting to know yourself. And I learned a lot about myself in just first semester being here. My business partner, who I met first, first semester here at Howard, has been my business partner since we were 18 years old from here I, I realized that I can I've met a lot of people in my lifetime but my real friends are the ones that I met right here at Howard they remain my friends today and my business partner uh, shout out to Art um, and everything is man Howard was it's, it's like magic
It's been extremely evolutionary, man. 19, 1867, obviously how we started. I was born 1967. From that point till now, all I've done is try to be the best dude I can be, give back to the community. It taught me how to do that. Because like it taught you like you're doing right now, reaching back like that. And that's what we should be doing for each other. So for me to come here and see these brothers and sisters coming back doing the same thing year after year, trying to pull up these other young brothers and sisters is what we're supposed to do. That's what Howard taught us. Howard University has been influential in my life in so many ways. First, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Howard because my parents met at Howard when they were here, students. And it helped me with my career and, and what I'm doing now in my business. So, uh, School of C, shout out to the School of C TV production. So yeah, that's how Howard's influenced my life. And your business now, how, how what is the shape? It's, it's enabled you to be able to do what that you're doing now? Live my dream, do my passions, and help my clients explore and expand their brands. Let's say it like this. Without Howard University, I don't know if I would be where I'm at today. Basically on so many levels, professionally, personally, it's family. Uh, friendships for years. It has built so much, it gave me so much character, so much confidence. Um, the networking ability with all the Howardites throughout the country, throughout the world. Uh, I can always come back for support to Howard. I give back to Howard, which is very important. Without us giving back to Howard, there would be no Howard University. Uh, and for me, Howard is the essence of higher education and learning for all African Americans. I have friends here for life. Uh, being from a predominantly white area coming here, it, it really transformed me as an adult, young woman. Came here at 17, it was culture shock, and I made this where I was going to be. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So, so many people have come to D.C. and have never left. Rhonda Berry came to D.C. never left. You know, it's all about, you know, how you find yourself and recognizing, you know, the place that's for you. No matter where you're from, it's where you wind up. How a homecoming. Thank you, baby girl. Thank you. Happy homecoming. All right. Happy homecoming. Thank you. Very influential. Helped me to become very independent and to persevere and to be a tenacious individual that I am. I'm just very glad that I went to Howard University, especially during the time that I did. It's funny, man. We were we were just here building on that and kind of talking about the challenges that we experienced when we came in and what we were dealing with in terms of just family and you know finance and that sort of thing. Howard has definitely been you know the backbone the backbone that's taught us how to hustle, how to persevere, you know, in terms of overcoming any kind of challenges. So yes, I'm out here with my girl Judy. We on the yacht. Happy homecoming, Judy. Happy homecoming. All right, so here's the theme question of the weekend. Uh -huh. How influential has Howard University been in the evolution of your life? Oh my goodness. It starts from way young. My whole family went to Howard. We are proud Howard Bisons all the way through to the graduate level. And um, this is all I know. That's really it. This is all I know. I mean, Howard University is, my God, in the last 20, 20 odd years, you know, this this university is the Mecca, it's, it's, it's home whenever you step back on this on this campus. It's just, it's just, it's a feeling of home and you see, you know, many friends and professors and so on and so forth. But as far as the influence, um, it's been very influential throughout, throughout um, my years, you know. The legacies of Howard are long. You see, we're partying. The bonds, the friendships, the elders. I'm with a brother here. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, now, please. brother, yes. the theme question for the weekend. Okay. How has Howard University influenced the development and evolution of your life? I mean, quite, quite simply and quite frankly. Uh, First of all, you judge the tree by the fruit that it bears. So in that, from an educational point of view, I was able to evolve from high school, and then I moved on in terms of how I matriculated. But in the process of being here, given the fact that I went, I came out in 65, Stokely Carmichael came out in 64, I was a member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, I became involved in the Civil Rights Movement as a result of my involvement at Howard University. Had I not been, had I not been in Howard, my involvement would not have been. So consequently, what I did was this, I graduated 
graduated. I became involved in my own business. I developed a business. First of all, I have a factory in Ethiopia. I moved out of the country. I'm back and forth from Ethiopia to Philadelphia. I have a clothing company. I have a, this hat that I have on is one of the lines. The shirt that I have on is one of the lines. The pants that I have on is one of the lines. This is an import in terms of one of the, one of the lines. So what Howard really did, and I mean, really, I'm 70 years old, and I, I just owe all my life in terms of my whole environment to my matriculation and how and the overall influence. You got to understand, I went to school with Rat Brown. I went to school with Kwame Torre. I was here when when and when all of the all, Kwame Leroy Jones, uh, Gene Wheeler. Uh, 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 um, Thurgood Marshall's influence was, was here. Chance Williams, uh, uh, Chance Williams, the makings of black revolutionaries. Uh, Six thousand years. I, I, I beg your pardon, Chance Williams, in that regard. But I'm saying, just in terms of reading the book, that's one of the books I had to read. So just in terms of just knowing my history, you, again, you judge the tree by the fruit. That, had I not known who I am, who I am, just as a result of being at a African American. Uh, university that emphasizes uh, the development of to the highest pursuit of the black African intellectual mind uh, given the fact this is school of Charles Drew every time you turn around you are hitting somebody in that regard so I gotta say my whole thing and then if you just look at this just look at this thing now man I remember at one point man it was just like a few people on the campus you gotta be I was here in 62 I was here in 63 man and I was also taught to do the right thing Listen, eat the right foods. Check this out. I've been a vegetarian as a result of my influence at Howard University. I still got my hair. Oh, praise this got a lot to do with my influence at Howard. I got to, I got to give it up, brother. I got to give it up. And then also, Marcus Garvey, in terms of when I studied uh, from Dr. Williams when I was at Howard, that's one of the reasons why I eventually moved out of America as a result of my educational process in Howard. So what can I say about Howard? My gosh. My Goodness gracious, man! I mean, if it wasn't for, I mean, if it wasn't for Howard, man, check this out. I would not even be here. I didn't came all the way from Ethiopia, man, just to be here for this homecoming. What do you mean, man? This is the what? This is local. This is number one. This is the me this don't type. This is the mecca, and it don't get no better. Guarantee you that. Now, what you want me to say? And you are, doc and you are. Doctor I'm, I'm, doc I'm Dr. Bambara, aka Blackbeard. Blackbeard. I give you one of my posters just in terms of you know how to contact me. I'm, I'm in Shashimani. I'm in Asababa. I'm in Philadelphia. I'm uh, hey, and I'm I'm here for right now. My point is Howard. I mean, let's let's can we start that all over again? I can just do this for over and over and over and over you and over the whole time. James Baldwin was here, man. I'm rocking with James Baldwin, man. It Dr. King, I, Dr. King was at Cranston Auditorium in 1964. I shook his hand. That's like shaking what? Jesus' hand, man, if you're a Christian in that regards, man. I'm just saying the greatest. Look at this brother right here. Look at these brothers right here that's taking care of business in terms of communication. It's an extension, and we're getting better and better and better and better, and ain't no stopping Howard now. We're constantly on the move. No doubt. Howard Homecoming, the experience, 2015. Got to keep watching. Let me watch you. Punch out, the infamous punch out. This was the spot we would come in between classes. It was like, you know, the, the cove, the hangout. I guess if we had lived in the Midwest, the malt shop. Just the after, after school, in between class, you'd come here for food. If you wasn't on the meal plan, um, you didn't want to eat what's in the cafeteria, you'd come here, eat the chicken fingers. You know, you had to have a little bit of bread though. Um, you know, they used to serve, you know, 
beverages. I mean, it was just love. It was just like a, it was like just a shop, you know. And uh, so many memories. Let's look in here now. I'm looking at how it's developed now. It's an actual food court. Um, and I tell you, when we were here. It was simply the counter was there. It was nothing like that. It was one counter. You made your order. You went and sat down, waited for about an hour, and then you got your French fries. But you didn't care because you was with your people. Um, and you just building. It was love. And anybody you know, class of '92, above, beyond. We all know what the punch out was, but the memories from here, it's phenomenal. And Howard University, Blackburn, the punch out. Howard University was everything in my life. Howard University made me who I am, gave me character, built me into the person I am today, gave me all the knowledge and the network we used to win our election in Newark. So Howard is like the foundation of everything that we doing in Newark. I mean, you, you, you learn to, to talk to and to be around and cultivate around your own kind, your own people. Newark is like 60% African American. So that's the kind of the population we had to cultivate in order to win the election. So I learned all of that here. Brothers, 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 we're here. Howard Homecoming Experience 2014. Oh, the day is crazy. It's Saturday, day two. I'm with my brothers, Pico, one of my elders. My brother, Dennis. What's good, brothers? I'm good, I'm good. God is good. Give him all the glory. I'm great. I'm blessed. So, brothers, the theme question for the weekend. How influential has Howard University been in the evolution of your life? Howard University gave me a quality education, it exposed me to experiences that I had not experienced before. I was able to meet people from all over the country, the nation, and the world. Howard University also has given me, a, again, an excellent career in what I'm doing now, as far as my acting career. D, let me tell you, Howard has opened up so many doors for me. Educational-wise, friends for life-wise, jobs, I can't even imagine the places I've been. In my lifetime, meeting the folks that I've met here in these four or five years have lasted a lifetime. There's no place, this is the real HU, you don't get it no bigger, no blacker, no realer than right here. That's why we the Mecca, that's why everybody comes here. Let me know well, how you're rolling. Let me tell you how I'm rolling. Chef Dennis Clark, executive chef, I was Dan Snyder's personal chef for the Washington Redskins, but took on another adventure. Now I'm executive chef at Maggiano's. I mean, how is the building blocks? It started from here, you know? Not only in terms of some people get different things from Howard, whether or not it's the education, the degree, but it's also the relationships that you build. You build lifelong relationships here. I have, whenever I was just, my nephew is trying to decide whether or not he wants to come here. I explained to him, you could be in a place and not know anybody. The moment you say you went to Howard and that person said they went to Howard, immediately is a, kin is a kinship. You know, you can't go any Anywhere without seeing somebody from Howard and, and getting that same love. It's, it's a different experience than any other university. People try to say that they get something close, but it's not anything close. You know, you're building lifelong relationships here. I may not have seen you in a good 10 years, but it was like I saw you yesterday. And it's like that with plenty of people here in terms of the network and understanding how to be able to build from here. So here we are right outside Green Stadium. We'll be walking to do the thing, but I see some other brothers. Are y'all Howard brothers? No, they're not Howard brothers, but they represent Norfolk. HBCUs, another fine HBCU. So the theme of the weekend, the theme question has been, how has Howard University influenced the evolution of your life? But for these brothers right here, they're gonna let us know how the HBCU Norfolk University has influenced the evolution of their lives. How are you, brother? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? I'm blessed. And your name is? Paul. Paul. So tell me, how have Norfolk influenced your life? Man, influenced my life in a great way. First and foremost, you know, I met my wife there, you know, 
and my wife, you know, alumni of Norfolk State, man, HBCU, you know, along with that, you know, I'm, I'm just a native of Norfolk and just feels good to, to be somewhere else and get represented the way that it is, you know, I love it. Now, now, now what brings you to Howard Homecoming? Uh, you know, this is our eighth year coming out here, you know, we like to have a good time, but we like to see the unity going on, you know, of our people getting together, having a good time. It's a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. And my brother, your name is? My name is Charles, everybody calls me Chuck. Chuck. All right, so Chuck, my brother yeah. Charles, a.k.a. Chuck, how has being a, a student, graduate, Norfolk State, another great HBCU, influenced the evolution of your life? Well, HBCUs definitely uh, influenced me because my mother graduated from Norfolk State while she was pregnant with me. So definitely I have a lot to say about HBCUs and the uplifting of uh, the sanctity and everybody coming together and just being together on one accord and enjoying each other in the black college. It's a lot to be said about that and it's not something to be done with. I think it's a great, a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. And my brother, definitely, your name is, sir? Tim. Tim? Yeah. So, another another Norfolk say? Yes, sir. All right, brother. So, how has Norfolk influenced the evolution of your life? I mean, and, and tremendously. You know, it gives me a foundation. It uh, gives me somewhere to lead uh, so I can help generations to come. You know what I mean? It, it, it helped me out in all kinds of ways. Uh, one thing I can say for most that it helped me out was uh, the leadership of our youth. You know, it, uh, it gives a platform and somewhere for everybody to follow. So, you know, it's good for us. It's good for the people, you know? That's a beautiful thing. So, like I said, you know, I'm here. We all about how we taught Howard. It's a beautiful situation. Howard's weekend. Remember, the experience. It's the Howard Homecoming experience. And at, not the Howard University experience, the Howard Homecoming experience. And at the Howard Homecoming, you will experience brothers, bonds from other HBCUs. So, understand, that's why it's called the experience. It's not about one university. It's about all of us because we're a collective unit. Because when if they snatch him up in the street, they're not going to say, oh, well, let's treat him a little bit better because he's from Norfolk or he's better from Howard, or let's not beat him down because he's from Howard, he's from Norfolk. So understand the HBCUs, we got to love each other, you know what I'm saying? Hug a brother, care, unilaterally. HBCU. Yeah, 100. Let me get this picture, man. Okay, brother. Uh, I can't even explain really how, how influential it has been. It has created a foundation for me that not only build like a whole lot of self-confidence and what we can achieve as black people, but it's also instilled in me a dedication and commitment to the community. So when you start adding your academics and you add the empowerment to it and you bring all that together in order to invest back into your community, it's the best thing that could, could have ever happened to me. Howard University is like no other place in the world. 14,000 strong. <laughs> Howard has had a very deep impact on my life. I mean, the people that I've met at Howard University are gonna be everlasting friends uh, with me uh, uh, to the end. They've helped me in every aspect of my life since I left Howard University. But one thing Howard did for me, uh, more than anything, was instill uh, the kind of uh, self-esteem that I don't think I could have got anywhere else. It gave me the confidence, the courage, to go back home and do uh, what needed to be done in my community, in my neighborhood. You know, uh, I don't think I would have studied as hard, I would have worked as hard, I would have thought as much about what was going on in the world and my place in it if it wasn't for Howard University. The incredible professors that I was able to sit in their classes from Ron Walters, uh, you know, to uh, even uh, Ivan Van Sertima was down here uh, during that time. You know, Howard University, uh, I've seen all kinds of speakers, been all kinds of meetings down here that, that are invaluable. I've never been able to, when I've never ever got anywhere else at any other institution in America. Howard is definitely the mecca, the capstone uh, of, of intellectualism in this country to me, not just of black education, but of uh, American education, period. Howard University is up there with one of the best schools in this nation uh, because not just the academic uh, life that you get, but the kind of social and cultural experience is uh, unexplainable, man. The, the, the kind of relationships that you build, the feeling that you have. Anybody that went to Howard loves it the same way they loved it when they walked on the yard at 18 years old at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. You love it the same way that you loved it. You remember it that way, the beauty of it, the liveliness of it. To my man playing the saxophone at the flagpole at eight o'clock in the morning on my way to school that we call Park Bird Parkers, my man. You know, I'll never forget that. He, he, I'm never gonna forget the Howard University takeover, the protest, me standing over the, in the building of the A building to watch the helicopters drop police officers on the roof. 
and Howard University students coming together for a cause. Man, I'm never gonna forget this place. It would be no Raz Baraka if it wasn't for Howard University. The experience, 2014, the movie. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to be home. You know, somewhere I started this trek in my life over 25 years ago. So the theme of the weekend has been how has Howard University influenced the evolution of your life? So I think I'll take a moment to answer that question for myself. Howard University, without question, was the greatest thing that ever happened to my life beyond, besides being born to my mother, Miss Deborah Christian, I love you so much. I thank my mother uh, for making me, and I say making me, go to an HBCU because she clearly knew there was something. Howard has given me friends, relationships, bonds, comrades, business associates, um, family that it's unmatched, and it's, 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 it's completely uh, sometimes undescribable. Um, I came into Howard University at 19 years old as a television production major. I knew at 19 I wanted to go into TV, and that School of Communications embraced me, um, and I learned a lot, and I took advantage of a lot of things. And, and I knew, I knew when I graduated that television production was what I wanted to do because of the relationship to Howard, because of the learning, because of the confidence, uh, because of this, the integrity and the dignity. So the Urban Wall Street, when I think about it, you know, was truly born at Howard. Because if there were no Howard, there would be no Urban Wall Street. So as you see me say plant seeds, the planting of the seed of Urban Wall Street was me leaving New York August 18th, 1987, to start the rest of my life. It's been an amazing journey, and I'm just getting started. Howard University Homecoming 2014. I love you. Happy Homecoming. So first of all, I came to Howard when I was 17 years old. There's so many different forms of how Howard has changed me. Professionally, if you ask me about a person within my network, I know everyone in every profession. We've come here as friends at 17, very young. I have friends now that are like family, that will be family for the rest of my life. The people that I've known from Howard University, I've known them for more than half my life. If you look at religion, the minister Farrakhan, you look at Raz Baraka, you look at his father, we're very, very self-conscious because of these people. My mother and father, this is my sister right here, we've been very conscious even before getting to Howard. Howard has heightened our elevation of who we are. It builds confidence in anybody that's young, that's looking at this, and you're contemplating on a school or a university to go to, Howard University is a place to go. But I'm telling you, this homecoming right now, ladies and gentlemen, my partner Earl Christian with the Urban Wall Street came out, he filmed a documentary and he spoke to people from all different genres and asked that same question of how Howard University has shaped us and built us. We started there as children, but we became men and women, we became professionals, we became um, consummate contributors to everything right now. It's all about contribution, it's all about consistency, and for those that want to be successful, what you need to do is consistency, is persistence and focus. Howard University has taught me that 100%.